Hello and welcome to today's video. What we have is a brief discussion about Android Studio and mobile app development. This will be just an introduction to uh, Android Studio and uh, it's going to be just, uh, just the basic, the minimum that you need in order for you to start and create your first app. Your first step will be to install Java JDK if you don't have it already. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to go online, Google for Java JDK download, and uh, you will quickly find the Oracle web page where you can uh, download the installation file and uh, follow the instructions. Click, 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 finish. That's it. You will quickly have your uh, Java JDK installed. The next step will be Android Studio. Of course, you Google again Android Studio download. You find the official web page and you download the latest version of Android Studio. You install it. Uh, I will not go into details as you noticed about installing Java or Android Studio because uh, it's just the same as installing any other app. You just follow the instructions, you click next, you read the terms and conditions and that's it. Once Android Studio is installed, we will open it and uh, we'll discuss about uh, these following steps. So after you have uh, Android Studio installed, this is what you should see. Well, except for uh, my projects, this will not be displayed in your version of uh, Android Studio. These are the projects that I have worked on so far. Uh, but nevertheless, what you have to do is to uh, create your new project and you have this button over here. Make sure to choose a phone and tablet project and choose empty activity. You click next. Then you have to specify uh, the name, package name. This is the name of the application. This is the package name where your classes will be included, the save location, the programming language. Uh, I've chose Java and uh, throughout the video series, I will be talking only about Java. If there is a request, I might do another series separately for Kotlin, but for now we'll stick with Java. And then you indicate the minimum SDK uh, the target, the minimum target platform that uh, your application will be able to run on. And uh, in my case, I've chose uh, Android 5.0. This is the Lollipop uh, edition. Then you click next and you wait for uh, Android Studio to load your new project. At this point, our uh, new project has uh, completed loading. And uh, if this is the first time you open Android Studio, you might feel uh, overwhelmed because there are a lot of menus and a lot of buttons to push and a lot of options to choose from. And uh, you might feel that there is no way you can learn all of this, uh, but uh, don't worry, stay assured that uh, throughout this series of videos, I will uh, explain and go through most of this. And uh, before you know it, you'll uh, feel confident and you'll be able to uh, develop some amazing new apps. But until we reach that point, let me just tell you what you have on the screen right now. In the upper left part over here, you have a structure showing your uh, project. You have the files and the folder uh, folders contained. And uh, this Android view is a simplified way of uh, displaying all this information. Um, is basically just uh, the folders with files uh, inside. However, you can also choose uh, other types of uh, displaying, for example, the project view, which will show an accurate uh, representation of all the files and folders as they are on your disk. And uh, in the future videos, I will explain why we need it. And uh, this will be very useful for us. But for now, just to keep things simple, we'll just move back to Android view. Now, all these menus, uh, when time comes, I will go to them and uh, explain. Uh, I will just show you this uh, central part, which has uh, the files which are opened. For example, right now you have um, one uh, main activity.java file. Uh, this is uh, a file containing uh, the main code of our application, the entry point and the control logic. Well, it's quite a lot said like that because the only thing this application does at this point is just to load a screen. And uh, that screen over here uh, contained in the XML file, uh, has only one object, which is a text view displaying hello world. 
We will run this application in a moment, but before we can do so, there are two things we have to uh, look at. And first will be the SDK manager. So we go under the tools menu and then we click SDK manager. SDK stands for Software Development Kit. And uh, before we can start and develop any mobile app, we need to have at least one SDK installed. For example, if you need to develop an app for, let's say, Android 9.0 uh, or Pi version of Android, then you have to install this uh, SDK. If you want to develop an app for a different one, let's say Lollipop, you have to install this uh, Android 5.0. Uh, SDK as well. Now, after you have your uh, SDK or multiple SDKs installed, also have a look at SDK tools and install this as well. Well, the ones that you need, you see, for example, I don't have all of them installed, but I have uh, chosen most of them. And uh, after that, you can just close the SDK manager. And uh, of course, when you want to test your application, you need a, a support, a device to test it on. You go again in the tools menu, and then you can choose device manager. This opens uh, this part over here with information, and you can choose a physical device. This will be a, a physical mobile phone to test your application on, or a virtual device. I personally prefer the virtual device because uh, it just loads the simulator and uh, I can uh, see everything, how it works, uh, and I don't have to connect my mobile phone, and uh, you know, I find it just easier, simpler. And uh, you can see I have three devices already configured. Uh, you probably have none at this time, but the way to fix it, to add or to create a device, is by pressing this button, create device. This will open a window presenting uh, a list of available devices which are already configured and you can choose any of them. Uh, let's say you have a uh, Pixel 1. If you are not satisfied with the specifications, you can modify them. You can go to new hardware profile and then you can choose a different screen size, different resolution, different memory, different sensors and so on. After you have uh, selected whichever options you want, you finish. You click uh, finish. I will not modify anything at this time. I don't need to modify. Uh, after you selected your device, you can go next, this button, and then you can choose uh, the operating system. You see this uh, Android uh, app level 24, the Nougat. This is already uh, available. However, if I want a different one, I can download it. Once you selected whichever uh, operating system you want or uh, version of the system you want to uh, use, you install it and then you click finish and the device will be added. As I uh, stated before, I will not add a new device because I already have three and uh, I don't need uh, any others at this time. So once you have uh, your virtual device, and you have your SDK obviously installed and your application is ready to run. This is what you will do. You will go here at the run button and you will press run. There are some informations which uh, are not relevant at this time on the screen. So for example, we have this device manager. I can just close this one. Uh, the project structure, again, I don't need it at this time, I can close it. And uh, I have over here these files that make up the project, I will just leave the main activity, for example, on screen. If you click the tabs over here, the lower ones, for example, the build one, you will see the actions of uh, Android Studio as our application is being built and uh, prepared to be deployed on the emulator. We have finally the application uh, loaded in the emulator. And uh, what I have noticed, and this is uh, something that might help you, 
as well. If you have uh, your antivirus program running, and uh, especially if you have real-time uh, running or real-time scanning of files, then your uh, emulator will be really, really slow. And the, actually the entire build process uh, will be slow. Uh, if you rebuild the app, the uh, build will take significantly shorter than uh, the previous one. But nevertheless, we have uh, the emulator loaded. Let me just minimize this. And uh, the app, the Hello World app, is here displayed in the emulator. What we will do now, because uh, this is just, uh, just an example to see how uh, we run an app, we can just close the emulator. And I'll just close here as well. It's uh, actually a very good um, moment for me to tell you how you can handle several um, errors that you might encounter. For example, if your build is not successful or if you have some uh, uh, ID errors, something like this, what you can do, uh, you can always try to rebuild. You, know, you can always go here and uh, rebuild your project. If this doesn't work, you can go in the file menu and then close and then reopen your project. And if this doesn't work either, you can uh, invalidate the cache. Last solution, switch everything off and back on by uh, exiting and entering again the uh, Android Studio. Uh, something else which might be helpful, uh, if you want to, um, to clean everything and start from scratch, uh, emulator related, you can always go uh, to one device. You press here and then you can wipe data. So this is uh, useful when you want to uh, load a new app and you want the emulator to be uh, free of any anything else which has been previously loaded into the uh, emulator. As you can see here, uh, this image of the emulator is uh, almost nine gigabytes uh, in size, while this one is less than one. So this is uh, this emulator. This image has a lot of apps loaded, and uh, you know I've used this quite a lot. This one is a fresh uh, image. Now with this information being uh, given to you, keep practicing and uh, meet me in the next video to, uh, to see further information about Android Studio and mobile app development. Thank you for joining today.